Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Publisher V2 and in this video I want to show you how you can put together a table card whether that is going to be for your wedding or perhaps a friend's wedding or maybe for a client or maybe you just want to use this for a dinner party. So what we need to do first of all before we get started is choose the correct canvas size that we want to use for this project and when it comes to creating a table card the size that I recommend is going to be an A6. So when you first open up Affinity Publisher you're going to see we have a few different options in terms of the sizes that we can choose and the two that you're going to pay attention to is going to be print or press ready. Essentially, these are exactly the same thing in terms of the sizes that they offer. The only difference is, is going to be the color profiles, which are going to be different between these two. So if I go ahead and I select the A6 in the print, over to the right hand side, you can see that it says RGB. Whereas if I go down to A6 in the press ready, you can now see that the color format has changed to CMYK. So without getting too technical about this, if you guys want to print your designs and you want to make sure that you are in CMYK, whereas if you just want to design for a device or a website, then you want to go ahead and use RGB. But because I'm going to assume that you guys want to print this design, we'll go ahead and choose press ready on the A6 and just make sure that we are in CMYK. Another thing to note is that you want to make sure your DPI is set to 300 as 300 DPI is the industry recommended standard to give you the best print quality. So with our canvas on A6, our DPI is set at 300 and our color profile as CMYK. What we want to do next is just head to the pages tab and we're going to turn off the facing pages as we want this design to be on a single page. Then next we're going to head over to the margin tab where we can go ahead and change our minimum margins. So if you guys didn't already know every single home printer will have a default minimum margin that you may find inside of your printer manual or on the manufacturer website but what that generally means is that anything outside of your minimum margin is going to get cut off by your printer so if you have text that goes from one edge over to the other then the part of that text on each side is going to be cut off same as at the top and the bottom so you always need to account for your minimum margins when you go ahead and create a project and print that so just to continue with the project, what I will do is I'll use the minimum margins which I have on my printer and my printer is a Canon. So you may have the same margins as this or you may have something different. However, that information should be available somewhere on the internet. So the left margin on mine is going to be a minimum of 3.5 millimeter. And on the right hand side, that is the same. So that is 3.5. And the top one as well is 3.5 on my printer and the bottom one is a little bit bigger which is 5mm. So they are all the margins that I need to set up for my printer. So it's worth knowing that if you guys want to print borderless from edge to edge then your margins really do not matter at all. However you're not going to be able to print this from home being from edge to edge on an A6 project. I do know that some printers including mine can print borderless on the size A3 and an A4 but they can't print borderless on anything smaller than that. So in most cases anything smaller than an A4 you're going to have to outsource if you want that to be printed from edge to edge or borderless. However, because I'm assuming that all of you guys are going to print from home, we'll go ahead and include the margins. So with the margins set up all that is left to do is go ahead and hit the create button. So here we are inside of the Affinity Publisher interface and before we get started with the design there's just a couple of things that we need to set up and that is going to be having our rulers visible as well as our guides. So if you guys don't already have your rulers on the top here and over on the left hand side just simply make your way up to the top menu bar to where it says view. Go down and make sure that you have show rulers checked right there and then they will be visible for you. What you also want to do inside of this menu is just make sure that you have that show guides visible as well as we're going to use the guides in a moment. And while I'm inside of this menu, what I also want to do is turn off my bleed, which are these lines here on the outside of the document. Because we're not printing borderless from edge to edge, we're not going to need these and they can be a little bit distracting. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn off that show bleed right there. 
and that'll turn off those lines for us. So next, what we wanna do is create a guide in the center point of our document. And the reason we're gonna do this is because essentially once we go ahead and print this, we want to be able to fold it in half. So it's going to be able to stand up on our table without falling over. So in order to create a guide, what we need to do is make our way up to the top where we have our top ruler, select inside of there and just start dragging down with your mouse. You need to go ahead and find the center point by waiting till it snaps. So somewhere around there with that red line, go ahead and let go of that. So what we just created here is going to be our fold line. So everything we want to design is going to remain underneath this center point. And I think I'm going to bring in the center line just over here as well, just to help me make sure that all of my content is centered as I move on with my design. So moving over to the left hand side, select inside of the ruler once again, drag that out and just let that go in the middle once you see that green line so it's snapped into place. And now we can continue with the design. So what I want to do first of all is bring in a background image that I want to use for this. And just to be a bit quicker with the video, I already have one inside of my assets folder over here on the left hand side. So I'll go ahead and use that one right there and drag and drop that in. And I'll just move it into position somewhere around there is going to be perfectly fine. When I put this into my assets, I already had my opacity set at 30% as you can see here. So I can go ahead and put that back if you want to see that a little bit clearer. However, for this design, I do want it to be a little bit faint in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that at that 30% I originally set it as. So these kind of images right here, which are PNG and they have no background. You can find all these types of images all over the internet on web pages such as Pixabay, as you can see right here. All you got to do is search for vector graphics and maybe type flowers or anything that you are searching for inside of there. Then you just need to right click on the image, go down to where it says copy image. Then we'll go back into Affinity Publisher and you can just simply right click on your mouse and just paste that in. Go ahead and resize that and move that into wherever you may want it to go. And if you also want to save this in your assets, all you got to do is simply just drag that over and drop that inside of there. And then that will be available in future every single time you open up Affinity Publisher. If you don't want it anymore, just right click on that and delete that asset. And I'll go ahead and just delete that one as well because I don't need it. Moving on, what I'm going to do next is just zoom in on this bottom part right here so you guys can see that a little bit better on your screens. So using Command or Control Plus is going to be how we zoom in on that. And I'll just move that into position. What we're going to do now is add a name to our place card. And the way we'll do that is by heading over to the left hand side toolbar menu. And we'll select the artistic text tool, which is this one right here. Then we'll just simply drag that out to the rough size that we're going to want to use. So I've got to use somewhere around 27, I think. And just type in any name that you would like. For me, I think I'm going to use Charlotte. Then I want to select all of this text using command or control A and we can go ahead and change the font. So heading up to the top left hand corner, we're going to go ahead and change this to something else. And I think for this, I'm going to go with this better Saturday right there as that's quite a nice font. Then I'm going to grab my move tool on the left hand side and just move this into position. So I'm going to put that roughly somewhere around there. And you can resize this any size that you like and move that wherever you want. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to leave it where it was. So I hit command or control Z to undo. Then what we need to do next is just add a table number underneath that. So I'm going to make a copy of this text right here with command or control C the copy and command or control V to paste. Just drag it out of the way and I'll just rename this one maybe table four. Once again, I'm going to use command or control A, select all of that text and we can change the font. So going back up to the top left hand corner, this time around, I think I'm going to choose that font right there. And I think instead of the four, I'm actually going to write that as it's going to look a little bit better. So I'll put F-O-U-R. Then I just need to go ahead and resize that. So I'll grab my move tool again on the left hand side and just grab one of these handles on the corner and get that to the rough size that I want it to be. So I think I'm going to have that roughly around maybe 20 millimeters and then just drag that up into place to where I roughly want it. In fact, maybe go a little bit smaller than that. This is personal preference. You can have that as big as you like. I'm going to leave that roughly around that size. So what we're going to do now is create ourselves a menu, which is going to sit underneath this table four. And the way that I'm going to do that is by using the table tool over on the left hand side toolbar panel, which is going to be this orange one right here. So with that selected, all we've got to do is simply just drag that out. And the further down you drag this out, the more columns you're going to get. 
and you can make them wider just by coming across and the further across you go the more columns you have there also we can go ahead and change all these custom sizes in just a moment we're going to need roughly around six columns for this so once you let go you can see that if you need to add additional columns either on the top here or on the bottom you can do so with this button right here just by simply selecting that and dragging that down to add or pulling up to remove them and that is going to be the same across the top here just pull that back to remove it or back that way to add it so at the moment these are a little bit too big for what I'm going for and I do need six of these so first of all I'm going to resize these cells and then I'll create an additional two so to resize these, we want to select all of these by clicking inside there and just highlighting all of this by dragging your mouse across. Then we need to go inside of our table menu just over here inside of this panel. If you guys aren't seeing this table panel right here, just simply go up to where it says window in your top menu bar. Then just make sure that down here inside of your table option, you have the table checked and then you'll have access to that also. So inside of here, what we want to do first of all is resize the cells, which is going to be this panel right here. So you can see we've got the width and the height. So that height is far too big at the moment. So I'll go ahead and just start decreasing that to a rough size that I'm going to be happy with. I think I'm going to manually come in here and just type in three millimeter and just hit enter. So looking at the top of this, we have cell A and cell B. I only really need the one cell here, so I'm going to go ahead and just remove that B. And with the width of this A right here, I think I'm going to have that roughly around 50 millimeter. Then I want to add an additional two rows at the bottom here. So grabbing that button there, we'll add number five and number six. Then what we need to do is just start adding some text inside of here. So we'll just start off with writing maybe starter. And because this font is slightly too big for the cell, it has automatically adjusted the size of that. So we are going to have to readjust that size maybe to an eight. And then we can go ahead and keep that height of the cell at three millimeter. So what we're going to do now is continue adding content into here. So underneath the starter, we'll have the meal option that you have. Then we'll probably have the main course followed by the meal for the main course. Then we'll have the title for the dessert. And then we'll have the dessert menu under that as well. So I'll just pre-fill this in and speed the video up a bit so you guys don't have to see me do this. Okay, so I've now finished my menu and all I really did after typing this up was just change the font and the sizes, such as this starter right here. I chose this font Brendan regular four points, whereas the one underneath that is also Brendan, but that one is light and that is also four points. And I just copied them across the rest of this. And as well as that, I just centered the text up here using the center align option just to make sure it sits in the middle of our table. And then that is a finished product. So I'm just going to come off there for a minute so we can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag this into place. So I'll let that just go ahead and snap in the middle right there. And I'm going to move that down just a little bit. So what I want to do next is I want the background of this table to be white. So we're going to go ahead and select all of these cells by dragging our mouse over. Back over inside of our table tab. We have this option down here that says fill. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to change that to white. Then once we've done that, I just want to turn off the border and all of these lines inside of that. And the way that we would do that is inside of this border option right here, starting with our outside border highlighted in blue. If we just tap on the black color right there, we want to go ahead and just turn that off using that little white circle with a red line in there. Next, we want to go ahead and find these lines which are going straight across. And that is going to be with this one right here. Then once again, we'll go ahead and select the black and we'll just turn that one off with a white circle. And then once we deselect all of that, it should just look like that, which is already looking better. What I want to do next is I want to put a border back on this, but I also want to have rounded corners. And the way that we're going to achieve that is by bringing in a rectangle. And we can do that just over here on the left hand side by selecting that rectangle tool right there. And I'm just going to snap that with that red line there and that green one. So I know it's in the corner of my table. I'm going to drag that all the way over. Let it snap at the bottom as well and just snap over there so it fills the entire table. Then I don't really need a color inside of this so I can go ahead and turn that off. And what I want to do is I want to drag the table inside of this rectangle that we just created and that is how we're going to get our rounded corners. So if we select our table which is this one right here, we start dragging that up and just drop that inside of the rectangle. And now that is nested inside. So if we select our rectangle, we're now going to be able to have some options to round these corners. And we can do that just up here on the top menu bar to where it says corner. 
We'll go ahead and we just select rounded right there and we can adjust the size of the rounded corners with this setting right here. At the moment it's on 25% which is a little bit too big. I'm going to bring this down roughly to maybe around 5% or 10, just see which one kind of looks better. I think I'll leave that around 10%, and I think I'm quite happy with that, so I'll just come off there for a moment and just take a look. That isn't looking too bad, but what we do wanna do now is add a stroke around that rectangle. So if we go ahead and select that rectangle once again, we choose our stroke color, which is a black one right there. Then we go inside of our stroke menu just up here, and we can adjust that with the width, so you can make that as big as you like. I think I'm gonna have that roughly around 0.5 or maybe 0.3 as I don't want it to stand out too much. And I'm quite happy with the way that looks at the moment. So this is generally nearly finished. All we have to do now is just add the name of the bride and groom at the bottom, as well as a date if you are going to use this for a wedding. So we'll just simply go back over to the left hand side, grab our artistic text tool once again, and we can just write out any name that you would like. So I'm just gonna put something random, maybe Liam and Jessica with a random date. Just like that, once again, I'll select all of that text so I can go ahead and change the font and look for something that looks a little bit better. So for this one, I think I'll go for that great vibes just to give it a bit of a handwritten kind of look. Then I'll grab my move tool and just resize this to something I'm more happy with that looks a little bit better on the design. That's far too big at the moment, so I'll drag that down a little bit and perhaps just have that a bit subtle towards the bottom. I think somewhere roughly around that size might be perfectly fine. And I'll just bring that up just a little bit. So you can see that because we have our margin set up, we've made sure that we've had none of this content come outside of there. So we haven't got to worry about any of that being cut off. What I'm gonna do now is just turn off all of these lines and margins so we can see our design a little bit better. So if I go up to the top menu bar to where it says view, then we'll just go ahead and turn off the margins and we'll do the same with our guides. And then that is the design that we are left with, which in my opinion looks really good. If I just go back over to the layers and I select that flower, you can always come back and just change the opacity on that just to make that a bit brighter if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. It's gonna be your design and your choices. But for me, I kinda of like that just to be a little bit more subtle in the background, so I do like to keep that around that 30%. So if we go up to File and we choose Print, what we can do now is just generally see a kind of representation of how it's going to look. But first of all, I've gotta change my printer to my Canon one right there, and I'll change the size from A4 to A6 which is just down here towards the bottom. I had to make this custom myself. So when you guys come to print this, you may just have to set up a custom profile for an A6 size. So once I select that, you can now see over here is gonna be kind of our visual representation of the print. All you gotta do is vision that kind of folded in half right there. And then you're gonna end up with this kind of image that I'll put on the screen right now. So this is kind of the way it would look once you fold it in half and put it on a dinner table. So you can see just how easy it is to put one of these together. If I wasn't sat here explaining all this to you, you could generally do this in just a couple of minutes. If you do want to print these, I recommend buying a decent thick card as you don't want them to be able to bend too easily. So thick card stock is definitely a good choice for this kind of project. So that is it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next one.